Hello and welcome to another video and today we're talking about the missile weapons in the Civil War PTS. Now to start off here, let's look at the medium range missiles, the 10, 20, 30, and 40. Now these fire a stream of missiles from your launcher that fly out at a pretty good projectile speed. It's 350 compared to the SRM's 400. And they do one damage per missile and a nice little cloud of death that you can throw out there because... I mean, MRM-40, 40 damage at a time. That's that's a fair amount of damage. They've got some really good DPS. But there are some drawbacks to these weapon systems. The fact that it is a stream, so if the enemy moves or rotates at any point during that stream, the damage is going to be spread or miss completely. And this, the projectile spread on these is actually fairly large. Like MRM 40s, you like you cover an entire atlas in terms of the spread. Even some missiles going beyond and going on each side of it. So if you're firing at anything small, you're only hitting with a portion of your damage. The MRM 10s have a much tighter cluster, and they're more like why I like to see the weapon tighter cluster and fire out from the launcher faster. Because that's another thing. We have the larger uh, numbers with the 30 and 40. They take um, not that long, but still a significant amount of time in the sense of a, a fast-paced online shooter to fully launch from the launcher. So you have these spread out missiles, which is great if the person is just going to stand still and take it. But if they're moving at all, you're entire strike is missed where an SRM volley is really tight compact all at the same time and faster which it's still it should be good you should still want to do SRMs if you're gonna get under 270 but I would make these MRMs just a little bit more useful at their range of 450 I would drop the spread down a bit Maybe make it standardized around MRM 20s, MRM, I don't want to say 10s, maybe that's a little too far. Maybe around the 20s. You want to uh, increase the rate at which they come out so that I think that all of the weapon systems should come out within the same time frame. You know what I mean? So the amount of time it takes to fire 10 missiles should be equal to the amount of time it takes to fire 40 missiles, maybe. I don't know how they could do that, but make it so that missiles launch a bit faster from them because having them in a, a smaller cloud would be more useful. And yeah, uh, also you want to make sure that you go through and check on the different mechs in the game to make sure that you fire the missiles at an appropriate rate depending on their amount of slots they have, not slots, um, missile tubes. I can't remember if that was an issue. Um, I know that was an issue with the rockets. They simply weren't firing enough things. If you didn't have tubes, they weren't firing enough rockets, which was a bug. But I can't remember if the MRMs were that way as well. So I would just give that a check. But moving on to streaks for the inner sphere. I got no comments about these because they're just streaks. I didn't see a single person testing these in all of the PTS games that I played. They're streaks. Some people use them. Some people will make a mass streak six catapult or something like that. But really, whatever. They're streaks. Uh, I still think that the ranges between clan and inner sphere streaks should be fixed because IS streaks are all 270. Clan streaks are all 360. Why? It's just let's just bring the 360 on the clan streaks down. There really was never a point for them to be longer range. They're just blatantly better than IS versions. So let's just bring them down to 270 right now, so they can match up with these and make me happy. And I don't see these weird things on spreadsheets. But moving on to rockets. Wow, these are interesting. Oh, I had no idea they were going to put these in. in. My original Civil War predictions video, I was like, they could put in rockets, but would they? They're one shot. They did for some reason. But these things are 
scary as hell. So you can have a mech have like over 200 damage in its alpha strike now because of these things. Like 20 damage for one and a half tons. Holy shit. That's a lot of damage. So if you are, if you're playing a mech and you have, say, your main weaponry being some lasers and a, and a, a UAC-10 or something like that, and you have two or three leftover missile hardpoints, you could do some SRMs, you could do an LRM-5 or whatever. Who cares? Put a rocket 20 in it. And all of a sudden you have an oh shit button. If you put like two or three rocket 20s, all of a sudden you have like 40 to 60 damage at one button press away that just kills something. So if you ever find yourself in that situation where you're like, I just, because of the dancing that goes on of maneuvering when people are in a fight, you just end up right behind somebody. Oh, goodbye. Boom. They're gone with a single trigger pull. People have been doing that with like mass rocket javelins, but like I said earlier, I think that's where an issue was, is the javelin wasn't shooting enough rockets at once because of its lower tube counts. So like mass rocket archers. Uh, I know on the stream that Sean Lang did uh, the day of this came out, uh, he got rocketed from fresh by a loyalty blackjack which also had large pulse lasers in each arm because you got to have backup weapons after your rockets kill somebody. So if you can just sneak up on somebody and delete them with like four rocket 20s, that's pretty powerful. Now you do have to be good and get in position and nuzzle up right against them so all the damage goes into one section. But the ability to just have this one-shot weapon that just deletes somebody from the game and then also have tonnage left over to have a decent loadout of some other type that's pretty powerful these ones are gonna be hard to pick out because they can only do it once but when they do it correctly they're freaking powerful but when they do it incorrectly you wasted a bunch of tonnage but moving on on to the clan stuff which only really have one thing which is advanced tactical missiles so excited about these but they turned out to be super clunky now ATMs are interesting. What they're trying to do is to do kind of like three weapons at once. Because ATMs had ammo swapping in lore. There was the standard, there was the high explosive short range, there was the standard medium range, and there was the extended range, long range stuff. I mean, it's like extended range. The HE rounds had no minimum range, but the standard and long range did. But the HE, and then they did different damages for each one. The HE did three, the standard did two, the long range did one. You would only ever load one, and you would deal with their thing. So you would load high explosive, and you would have no minimum, but you would have a very short maximum range. You would load standard. You would have a minimum range, but you would have a mediocre uh, max range. You know, you would you would be only one of the three. But what they're doing here is they have this weird step graph with the damage. So you have three for a duration, and then it quickly goes to two. Then it have two for a duration. Then it quickly goes to one. Then you have three for a duration, other duration, a range, and they have a minimum range, a hard minimum at 200 meters. I have found these things so unwieldy when I've been testing. Now I have to put a caveat in here. We're four on four on the testing client and that means that there is no support fire. If you are going in and you are playing a mech that is primarily designed to be supporting role, like a whole bunch of things like different types of snipers with ER large lasers, um, Gauss rifles, except for the heavy Gauss, that's pretty short range right now, but the trying to do like light Gauss sniping or ATM or LRM it doesn't work that well with only four on four because no front line gets established. You can just get pushed. So it's better to take brawlers right now on the PTS. So these things are falling behind because 
the 200 meter minimum range, you can easily get within 200 meters of somebody. So there goes the majority of weapons from my mad dog or something like that. Uh, I can't hit them, just use my small lasers. But also, these things have a very, very flat missile per, like arc. So if you lock onto somebody and fire your missiles, they literally don't go much higher than your mech's head and then fire straight at the target. Now that's really cool. That's really interesting. I kind of like that. It, it's, it's fun. But you cannot, under any circumstance, use these without direct line of sight. Like, they have a max range of 1,100. There's no way you would ever use these things in an indirect fire method. I tried. I did. I just a whole bunch of missiles hitting dirt. You have to have line of sight to make these ATMs work. And it damages them. Like, they're just not that useful. You should be able to at least, at least fire over at the tiniest rock like you can the, the kind of thing where you can still see their head but you just can't get a, a lock on it like just it's like the, all you have to do is just back down this gentlest slope and the missiles will hit the slope instead of them because there is no arcing to them they're just straight at the opponent i don't know i really want atms to be a thing i love their idea but i feel like they're trying to put three weapons into a single weapon system and then all three of them are conflicting with each other and becoming this clunky mess i would prefer one or two things either put in different versions of atms that are he standard and extended and have one set of ammo for them or you could do the one set of launchers and multiple different types of ammo but they're just not going there as they just have shown that they're not going to go down that route or just pick one do you want short range missiles to be short range stuff cool have atms be the mid-range have atms with a minimum range that's fine but have their max range like 500. Take their mid range mid range down a bit. Maybe make it scaling. I, another thing is I hate that it's a, a, a complete cutoff at 200. When it's like, at, ooh, you're at 199 meters. I take no damage. It's like, god damn it. LRMs still do majority of their damage at one meter closer under their minimum. It should have a scaling min. Or some people would argue absolutely no min at all. But pick one of the roles and then just design them around that and say in our game atms are the mid-range direct fire lrm and i would be okay with that i would actually prefer that lrms for long range atms for mid-range srms for short range boom we have a clear hierarchy to them but as it stands now atms are weird and if you're not firing them at short range, like the ATM-3, if you're firing at long range, you only do 3 damage. You only do 72 damage per ton of ammo. It's so not worth it to take that much ammo and just waste it at long range when you could use an LRM. If you fire at mid-range and do 6, eh, it's starting to get there, but I would still increase this to like 100. Yeah. That's what I personally do. I'd set these to mid-range values, I'd increase the ammo, and then see how it goes from there. But uh, that's going to be it for missiles. Thanks for watching, and good hunting.